Today is June 11th. I'm Serena, and welcome to the Seven Streams Bible Reading Method. We are in the World Stream today, reading from the book of Exodus, and we will actually finish Exodus in today's reading. For those of you who have the bookmarks, I do apologize because it says we're reading 3725 to 1038, but we're actually going to go to 40. 38. We will <laughs> we will go forwards, not backwards. So anyway, that's okay. Hey, you're the first run, and sometimes the first run just has a few typos, and it did. So this is exciting. We're finishing another book, and I always feel great on finishing a book because it feels like a huge accomplishment. So thank you for spending some time with me today as we continue listening to how Bezalel is going to finish his work for the tabernacle. Exodus 37.25 Then he made the altar of incense of acacia wood, a cubit long and a cubit wide, square, and two cubits high. Its horns were of one piece with it. He overlaid it with pure gold, its top and its sides all around, and its horns and he made a gold molding for it all around. He made two golden rings for it under its molding, on its sides, on opposite sides, as holders of poles for which to carry it. He made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. And he made the holy anointing oil and the pure fragrant incense of spices, the work of a perfumer. Then he made the altar of burnt offering of acacia wood, five cubits long and five cubits wide, square and three cubits high. He made its horns on its four corners, its horns being of one piece with it, and he overlaid it with bronze. He made all the utensils of the altar, the pails and the shovels and the basins, the flesh hooks and the fire pans. He made all its utensils of bronze. He made for the altar a grating of bronze network beneath under its ledge, reaching halfway up. He cast four rings on the four ends of the bronze grating as holders for the poles. He made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with bronze. He inserted the poles into the rings on the sides of the altar with which to carry it. He made it hollow with planks. Moreover, he made the laver of bronze with its base of bronze from the mirrors of the serving women who served at the doorway of the tent of meeting. Then he made the court. For the south side the hangings of the court were of fine twisted linen, one hundred cubits, their twenty pillars and their twenty sockets, made of bronze. The hooks of the pillars and their bands were of silver. For the north side there were one hundred cubits, their twenty pillars and their twenty sockets were of bronze, The hooks of the pillars and their bands were of silver. For the west side there were hangings of fifty cubits with their ten pillars and their ten sockets. The hooks of the pillars and their bands were of silver. For the east side, fifty cubits. The hangings for the one side of the gate were fifteen cubits, with their three pillars and their three sockets, and so for the other side. On both sides of the gate of the court were hangings of fifteen cubits, with their three pillars and their three sockets. All the hangings of the court all around were of fine twisted linen. The sockets for the pillars were of bronze, the hooks of the pillars and their bands of silver, and the overlaying of their tops of silver, and all the pillars of the court were furnished with silver bands. The screen of the gate of the court was the work of the weaver, of blue and purple and scarlet material and fine twisted linen, And the length was twenty cubits, and the height was five cubits, corresponding to the hangings of the court. Their four pillars and their four sockets were of bronze, their hooks were of silver, and the overlaying of their tops and their bands were of silver. All the pegs of the tabernacle and of the court, all around, were of bronze. This is the number of things for the tabernacle, the tabernacle of the testimony, as they were numbered according to the command of Moses for the service of the Levites, by the hand of Ithamar the son of Aaron the priest. Now Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, made all that the Lord had commanded Moses. With him was Aholiab, the son of Ahissamach, 
of the tribe of Dan, an engraver and a skillful workman, and a weaver in blue and in purple and in scarlet material, and fine linen. All the gold that was used for the work, in all the work of the sanctuary, even the gold of the wave offering, was twenty-nine talents and seven hundred thirty shekels, according to the shekel of the sanctuary. The silver of those of the congregation who were numbered was one hundred talents and one thousand seven hundred seventy-five shekels, according to the shekel of the sanctuary. A beka a head, that is, half a shekel according to the shekel of the sanctuary. For each one who passed over to those who were numbered from twenty years old and upward, for six hundred three thousand five hundred fifty men. The hundred talents of silver were for casting the sockets of the sanctuary and the sockets of the veil, one hundred sockets for the hundred talents, a talent for a socket. Of the one thousand seven hundred seventy-five shekels, he made hooks for the pillars and overlaid their tops and made bands for them. The bronze of the wave offering was seventy talents and two thousand four hundred shekels. With it, he made the sockets to the doorway of the tent of meeting, and the bronze altar, and its bronze grating, and all the utensils of the altar, and the sockets of the court all around, and the sockets of the gate of the court, and all the pegs of the tabernacle, and all the pegs of the court all around. Moreover, from the blue and purple and scarlet material, they made finely woven garments for ministering in the holy place, as well as the holy garments which were for Aaron, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. He made the ephod of gold, and of blue and purple and scarlet material, and fine twisted linen. Then they hammered out gold sheets and cut them into threads to be woven in with the blue and the purple and the scarlet material, and the fine linen, the work of a skillful workman. They made attaching shoulder pieces for the ephod, it was attached at its two upper ends. The skillfully woven band which was on it was like its workmanship, of the same material, of gold and of blue and purple and scarlet material, and fine twisted linen, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. They made the onyx stones, set in gold filigree settings. They were engraved like the engravings of a signet, according to the names of the sons of Israel and he placed them on the shoulder pieces of the ephod as memorial stones for the sons of Israel, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. He made the breastpiece the work of a skillful workman, like the workmanship of the ephod, of gold and of blue and purple and scarlet material and fine twisted linen. It was square. They made the breastpiece folded double, a span long and a span wide when folded double and they mounted four rows of stones on it. The first row was a row of ruby, topaz, and emerald, and the second row, a turquoise, a sapphire, and a diamond, and the third row, a jacinth, an agate, and an amethyst, and the fourth row, a beryl, an onyx, and a jasper. They were set in gold filigree settings when they were mounted. The stones were corresponding to the names of the sons of Israel, they were twelve, corresponding to their names, engraved with the engravings of a signet, each with its name for the twelve tribes. They made on the breastpiece chains like cords, of twisted cordage work in pure gold. They made two gold filigree settings and two gold rings, and put the two rings on the two ends of the breastpiece. Then they put the two gold cords in the two rings at the ends of the breastpiece. They put the other two ends of the two cords on the two filigree settings and put them on the shoulder pieces of the ephod at the front of it. They made two gold rings and placed them on the two ends of the breastpiece on its inner edge, which was next to the ephod. Furthermore, they made two gold rings and placed them on the bottom of the two shoulder pieces of the ephod on the front of it, close to the place where it joined above the woven band of the ephod. They bound the breastpiece by its rings to the rings of the ephod with a blue cord, so that it would be on the woven band of the ephod, and that the breastpiece would not come loose from the ephod, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. 
Then he made the robe of the ephod of woven work, all of blue, and the opening of the robe was at the top in the center, as the opening of a coat of mail, with a binding all around its opening so that it would not be torn. They made pomegranates of blue and purple and scarlet material and twisted linen on the hem of the robe. They also made bells of pure gold and put the bells between the pomegranates all around on the hem of the robe, alternating a bell and a pomegranate all around on the hem of the robe for the service, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. They made the tunics of finely woven linen for Aaron and his sons, and the turban of fine linen, and the decorated caps of fine linen, and the linen breeches of fine twisted linen, and the sash of fine twisted linen, and blue and purple and scarlet material, the work of the weaver, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. They made the plate of the holy crown of pure gold and inscribed it like the engravings of a signet, Holy to the Lord. They fastened a blue cord to it, to fasten it on the turban above, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Thus, all the work of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting was completed, and the sons of Israel did according to all that the Lord had commanded Moses. So they did. They brought the tabernacle to Moses, the tent, and all its furnishings, its clasps, its boards, its bars, and its pillars, and its sockets. And the covering of ram skins dyed red, and the covering of porpoise skins, and the screening veil. The ark of the testimony, and its poles, and the mercy seat. The table, all its utensils, and the bread of the presence the pure gold lampstand with its arrangement of lamps and all its utensils, and the oil for the light, and the gold altar, and the anointing oil, and the fragrant incense, and the veil for the doorway of the tent, the bronze altar, and its bronze grating, its poles and all its utensils, the laver and its stand, the hangings for the court, its pillars and its sockets, and the screen for the gate of the court, its cords and its pegs, and all the equipment for the service of the tabernacle, for the tent of meeting, the woven garments for ministering in the holy place and the holy garments for Aaron the priest, and the garments of his sons to minister as priests. So the sons of Israel did all the work according to all that the Lord had commanded Moses. And Moses examined all the work, and behold, they had done it. Just as the Lord had commanded, this they had done. So Moses blessed them. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, On the first day of the first month you shall set up the tabernacle of the tent of meeting. You shall place the ark of the testimony there, and you shall screen the ark with the veil. You shall bring in the temple and arrange what belongs on it, and you shall bring in the lampstand and mount its lamps. Moreover, you shall set the golden altar of incense before the ark of the testimony and set up the veil for the doorway to the tabernacle. You shall set the altar of burnt offering in front of the doorway of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting. You shall set the laver between the tent of meeting and the altar and put water in it. You shall set up the court all around and hang up the veil for the gateway of the court. Then you shall take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and all that is in it, and shall consecrate it and all its furnishings, and it shall be holy. You shall anoint the altar of burnt offering and all its utensils, and consecrate the altar, and the altar shall be most holy. You shall anoint the laver and its stand and consecrate it. Then you shall bring Aaron and his sons to the doorway of the tent of meeting and wash them with water. You shall put the holy garments on Aaron and anoint him and consecrate him, that he may minister as a priest to me. You shall bring his sons and put tunics on them, and you shall anoint them even as you have anointed their father, that they may minister as priests to me, and their anointing will qualify them for a perpetual priesthood throughout their generations. Thus Moses did, according to all that the Lord had commanded him, so he did. Now in the first month of the second year, on the first day of the month, the tabernacle was erected. 
Moses erected the tabernacle and laid its sockets and set up its boards and inserted its bars and erected its pillars. He spread the tent over the tabernacle and put the covering of the tent on top of it, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Then he took the testimony and put it into the ark and attached the poles to the ark and put the mercy seat on top of the ark. He brought the ark into the tabernacle and set up a veil for the screen and screened off the ark of the testimony just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Then he put the table in the tent of meeting on the north side of the tabernacle, outside the veil. He set the arrangement of bread in order on it before the Lord, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Then he placed the lampstand in the tent of meeting, opposite the table, on the south side of the tabernacle. He lighted the lamps before the Lord, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Then he placed the gold altar in the tent of meeting in front of the veil, and he burned fragrant incense on it, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Then he set up the veil for the doorway of the tabernacle. He set the altar of burnt offering before the doorway of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting, and offered on it the burnt offering and the meal offering, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. He placed the laver between the tent of meeting and the altar and put water in it for washing. From it, Moses and Aaron and his sons washed their hands and their feet. When they entered the tent of meeting and when they approached the altar, they washed, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. He erected the court all around the tabernacle and the altar and hung up the veil for the gateway of the court. Thus Moses finished the work. Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses was not able to enter the tent of meeting because the cloud had settled on it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Throughout all their journeys, whenever the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the sons of Israel would set out. But if the cloud was not taken up, then they did not set out until the day when it was taken up. For throughout all their journeys, the cloud of the Lord was on the tabernacle by day, and there was fire in it by night, in the sight of all the house of Israel. Dear God, we thank you for visiting us and all who will prepare themselves to come into the presence of you. Thank you for availing yourself to us. To be with you is the blessing of all blessings. Amen. In chapter 37, Bezalel made the Ark of the Covenant, the table for it, the lampstand, and the altar of incense. Just take a moment in your mind to transport back over 33 centuries and imagine just walking quietly up to Bezalel at work. Bezalel, what are you making? A box of acacia wood to be covered in gold to hold the Ten Commandments. Hmm, well, what's the significance of this? All society hinges upon what's in this box for all time. The governments who ignore these commandments shall crumble. As will the nations, the states, communities, neighbors, and families and individuals. The opposite is more true. All who follow and honor these commands will become eternally blessed. This box is not just a part of history. It is history. In fact, history pivots upon the contents of this box. Now, after this conversation, there's nothing that you can do but walk away backward and be in awe in the presence of the work of a holy God who is a consuming fire. In chapter 38, everything that was described a few chapters back is completed at this point. In chapter 38, the altar is completed, the laver, the court, the gorgeous linen perimeter of the tabernacle. All the contents for the tabernacle were completed. Just the mathematics of this were staggering. It's just too much to sum up. There was over 2,200 pounds of gold involved in this endeavor. That doesn't even count the silver and the bronze. This was the place where God would be met and consulted with, sins forgiven, directions received. 
It had been over 2,600 years since Adam and Eve were expelled from the garden. People had been trying to figure out ways of getting back in touch with God after that time. And now God had given them a way. This tabernacle was where God would be met. It was gravely awesome to be near this place, and it would be assembled soon. In chapter 39, the ornate garments for the priests are made and completed. They're far more decorative and costly than what we would label as fit for a king. The details were tedious and numerous, and the work was done fastidiously, comprehensively, and perfectly. Once this was complete, these garments, along with the rest of the items for the tabernacle, were brought to Moses for examination by Moses. The work was done just as the Lord had commanded. Moses blessed them, and now it was time for the finale. In chapter 40, the tabernacle is finally raised and assembled. The anointing is completed, the lamps are lit, the offerings are placed, and the washing is done. And they entered the tent of meeting, did the finishings and all the work that was done. Then the miracle of God's presence occurred. The cloud, symbolizing the presence of God, settled upon the tabernacle. And for the next two generations, they would be in the wilderness of Sinai and all around, and the cloud would settle upon the tabernacle to state that God was in. When he lifted, it was time to go. When he settled, it was time to settle and wait. There was a cloud by day and a fire by night. And this was a blessing to witness for all the house of Israel, not just the priests and leaders. What a marvel. Sevenstreamsmethod.com is the home port for this podcast. Thank you so much for joining me today. Sure hope you enjoyed this journey to the end of Exodus. We <laughs> we completed the Exodus. So tomorrow we will transition to the nation stream and see what's going on in the life of Solomon. Know that nothing can separate you from the love of God. Until tomorrow, I'm Serena, sailing with you down the seven streams. <laughs>